Good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Itri MMSL, Mechanical and Mechatronic Systems Research Laboratory's 2023 Online Business Matchmaking Forum. For the next 100 minutes or so, our team of researchers will lead you into Taiwan's leading edge technologies concerning smart mobile vehicles and smart manufacturing. After today's event, you will have the opportunity to engage one on one with our experts to explore further opportunities of collaboration. So don't forget to sign up for the matchmaking meetings through the QR code that will be shown during the break and at the end of the event. Without further ado, let's first welcome Deputy General Director of MMSL, Bing Shang Yang, for some opening remarks. Welcome to the 2023 MMSL Online Business Matchmaking Forum. My name is Bing Shang Yang the Deputy General Director of Mechanical and Mechanic System Research Laboratories in Industrial Technology Research Institute, or ITRI, in Taiwan. ITRI is a world-leading applied technology institute with more than 6,000 employees. Its mission is to drive industrial developments, create economic value, and enhance social well-being through technology R&D. To innovate a better future, it enhances the developments on three application domains, smart living, quality health, and sustainable environments. The Institute strives to use technology innovation to shape new lifestyle, develop market-oriented solutions, and find uncontested spaces. Mechanical and Mechanic System Research Laboratories, or MMSL, is one of the research units in ITRI. We focus on research and developments in smart vehicles and smart manufacturing. This is our very first online business matchmaking forum. In, this, in the following 100 minutes or so, we will introduce you our recent research and developments covering electric vehicles, mainly on the transmission and chassis design, autonomous driving technologies, multi-axis motion control, high payload drone developments, smart factory integration, low carbon or zero carbon manufacturing technologies, also in semiconductor manufacturing equipment and robotic related technologies. We aim to provide you a quick overview of our focus and capabilities. Most importantly, we hope you are able to discover some common interests that we can do business or collaborate with in the future. After the presentations, please take a few minutes to fill out the survey. We will follow up with you if you are interested in our technologies or are searching for solutions that we might be able to provide. We are looking forward to potential partnership with you. Hope you enjoy the 2023 MMSL Online Business Matchmaking Forum. Thank you, Deputy General Director Yang. The first session of our program today will focus on the technologies of smart mobile vehicles. In the following 40 minutes, our four experts will share on electric and autonomous vehicles, motion control solutions, and heavy lift drone technologies. The YouTube tab function will be enabled throughout today's program. Should you have any questions or would like to learn more about a specific topic, please leave your message. We will gather your requests and discuss them with you during the one-on-one -on -one matchmaking meetings that will be arranged after the event. Let's now welcome Deputy Manager John Tao to share on EV transmission and chassis. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is John Tao and I very appreciate to have the opportunity to give you a brief introduction of our development in E3 EV, and EV transmission and the chassis. And it's our organization, and my department belongs to the Vehicle Homologation Division of MMSL, and there are three departments. The first one is the Vehicle Cert Certification Department, and they are responsible for the energy and emission research, also the vehicle certification. And the other one is the Department of Chassis and Dynamics. They are responsible for the spatial heavy vehicle chassis layout and the design. And I belong to the Precision Transmission Technology Department. 
and we are responsible for the uh, EV transmission and the high efficiency precision reducers. Also, in the recent years, we are working on the chassis of commercial EV. And we are one of the oldest departments in e -tree. We have more than 30 years experience in gear transmission, design, and development. And our products are used in the aircraft, uh, tool machine, turbine, also the heavy vehicle transmission, also the elevator reducer. And in the recent years, we have focused on the EV transmission and the precision reducer for the industry, also the EV, trans EV chassis. And for the uh, vehicle transmission, we focus on the gearbox development and uh, its test and verification, also the components design. And for the industry reducer, we are working on the RV reducer and the planetary gearbox also the Industry 4.0 uh, Smart Gearbox. And for the vehicle chassis, we are working on the commercial EV ch chassis and the special use chassis. And in EV transmission, we could provide total solution for the design and development for the transmission. And based on the different kind of uh, vehicle specification and performance requirements, and our team could offer a customized design for the gear ratio, also the housing, and in, in its case, mounting. And we are focused on the research and design for the vehicle and transmission system. Uh, there, are, there is our general uh, R&D workflow for transmission system. And we follow the R&D V model. And in this slide, uh, it's the left hand side of the V model. We have uh, vehicle simulation and low cycle synthesis technology for vehicle dynamics to verify the systems and products requirements. And we design new transmission concept for the electric vehicle. And about the uh, detailed design and, and analysis, we have uh, ability to design gears and uh, synchronizers, also clutch and parking system. And in the system level, we have system integration design, uh, system life analysis, and gear contact pattern, and also the MVH analysis. Then for the documentation, tolerance investigation, 2D drawing, and design verification plan are all our own capabilities. Then in the right-hand side of the V model, from the 2D drawing and the DVP, we manufacture parts by ourselves or, or by our suppliers. Then we assemble the parts and system by ourselves in our factory, also to test the subsystem and system in our old facilities. And here are our general items for system verification plan for the transmission system. Uh, for our star arc test, which check the assembly is OK or not, then replication test for sealing and cooling performance, mechanical test and efficiency test for system performance, and trans, uh, transmission efficiency verification. Also, the MVH test for sound and, and vibrations. And here are some test bench for our transmission system, like power train test bench, transmission test bench, also the clutch and e-parking system test bench. And we have a factory in our campus. Here are some of our facilities for jig, gear, and shaft manufacturing, like the, uh, our uh, cap niles, uh, gear grinder, and studer S31 cylindrical grinders. Also for the gear manufacturing process research, we have a heat treatment factory in our campus to test the heat treatment process for our transmission gears and shafts. And for the MVH test equipment, we have the gear measurement and the 3D dimension exam, exam, uh, examination lab, also some MVH equipment. And for our transmission products, for EV transmission, the first one is a two-speed automated EV gearbox. 
it could apply to a 140 kilowatt peak power traction motor. We have completed the test bench test and vehicle test. We apply this gearbox to a first generation Nissan Leaf, and this video is showing the parking test on a 35% slope and the high speed shifting test on a dyno. And here are our two speed EV gearbox specification. And there are two types. First one is for, for with the synchronizer, and the other one is with the dual clutch. Another EV transmission product is the single speed EV gearbox, and we have four models for a single speed system. And it could apply to the peak power 120 kilowatt to 150 kilowatts motor. And these two are for the 120 kilowatt of single gear ratio from 3 to 8. And especially for the last one model, it's a single output shaft and could suitable for a small truck with a rear drive system. And for the e-bus and heavy duty vehicle, we have an integrated planetary gearbox and combine the gearbox and trans uh, traction motor it could apply to a 220 kilowatt peak power motor. And for the industry reducers, for RV cycloid reducer, we have a two model. Uh, we have two models of now, and the tip torques are from the 245 to 784 newton meter. And for the chassis development, uh, first one is uh, our electric commercial vehicle chassis and it could apply to a 3.5 tons commercial EV with wheelbase 3,300 millimeter. Also, it's a real drive system with a single speed electric powertrain. Uh, in this project, we have done the design and prototypes for the powertrain, frame, steering, brake, also control, suspension and its battery and transmission systems. And the other one trans chassis project is for a 12 tons and will base 3,300 millimeter heavy duty vehicle. And it's a diesel engine powered system with four wheel drive transmission system. And in this case, the development including the front brakes and steering, also the cooling, suspension, portion, and the transmission, also the fueling system. And here are some of our domestic industry partners, uh, like the local vehicle and the e-scooter OEMs, and some domestic robot and reducer companies. So here is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Manager Cao. For our next topic on an introduction of eTree's autonomous vehicle, let's welcome R&D manager Victor Liu. Today we'll give a brief, a brief intro introduction of uh, eTree's autonomous vehicle technology. Uh, let me give a brief uh, history of the self-driving car technology effort here at eTree. So we started a little bit, a little bit more than uh, four years ago, back in 2018. Um, since then, we have became the first team in Taiwan to pass government testing and to obtain uh, the first self-driving car license plate in Taiwan. Uh, since then, we've also successfully collaborated with multiple local governments to uh, do some public self-driving demonstrations, uh, including with Xinchu City and Taoyuan City and Taichung City uh, uh, collaborations both domestically and internationally. So this includes, uh, so domestically we worked with uh, Shinchu Logistics Company and internationally we've worked with uh, several renowned car manufacturers and um, uh, highway operators. So one of the main selling points of our technology is uh, its modular architecture. So it consists of uh, several subsystems that can be easily adopted to various operating scenarios in various vehicle types. Uh, so shown in this slide, you can see uh, actual cars 
on which uh, we have successfully deployed our uh, self-driving technology. So this includes on the top left electric, purely electric vehicles, and on the bottom left we have diesel buses, and in the middle there's the mid-sized truck for logistics uh, applications, and top right there's a hybrid vehicle, and on the bottom right is a freight truck with uh, with a uh, trailer box attached to it. So all of those vehicles, all those vehicle types can uh, our technology can be successfully used on. Uh, so our technology stack consists of these subsystems shown on the right. So this includes the action and control module, uh, perception, mapping, localization, tracking, prediction, and so on. Uh, so these subsystems will be get interfaced with these, can be interfaced with these various uh, sensor types. So that includes uh, the camera, LiDAR, GPS, uh, radar, and even external communication sources, such as roadside units and uh, some control center living in the cloud. Uh, all these real-time signals will get passed into our subsystem, which will then uh, form some understanding of its surrounding based on, with the help of these various signals, and to uh, compute a the, the control signals to the drive-by-wire system so that the car can uh, can do a to, can be safe can do a safe and performant driving. Uh, one of the um, most important parts for ensuring uh, safety and performant driving, self-driving, is uh, the availability of a HD map. So HD map will provide. Um, it will, it's a centimeter accurate map that allows the vehicle to uh, get localized onto it so that the vehicle knows where exactly it is on the, on the, in the world. And it also provides additional rich information about the surrounding uh, that the vehicle, the self-driving car, may not be able to directly perceive with its uh, sensors. Um, so we provide tools that allow us to uh, create these HD maps at scale. Uh, so on this slide, you can see some examples of HD maps created using our tools. Uh, on the immediately below the text is uh, the point cloud map and vector map of the Itri campus. And the bottom left image shows the scale that is ach achievable by our mapping tools. Um, and in the middle, we have uh, mounted on a car, the, the mapping sensors that we, this low cost mapping toolkit uh, that we built. And uh, on the right, this video shows that, uh, shows the self driving car being localized onto the HD map. So the perception module is uh, responsible for taking uh, all these sensor, real time sensor streams and uh, combining them, analyzing them, and in real time forming an understanding of its environment. Um, so this includes knowing where uh, the location and the speed of its surrounding cars and pedestrians, even scooters, and um, also on the right, uh, so let me play this video. So this perception system is able to uh, know about the location and the speed of surrounding objects. And it's also responsible for analyzing the image and finding traffic lights and correctly determining the state of the traffic lights. Uh, in addition to these uh, sensors for, uh, understand, for sensing the vehicle surrounding, we can also augment these senses with uh, information uh, from farther, farther away. So like uh, roadside units with cameras from farther away or even around a building corner can share its, can, its camera, it can share its view uh, through wireless communication with the vehicle. Uh, so this will further expand the horizon or the, the, the amount of the field of view that the vehicle has so it could be
be more safe and uh, perform more performant driving. Uh, so our technology stack includes um, uh, software to support this kind of uh, connected V2X communication. So in this video, you see uh, the car's um, real-time inf information is being uh, passed on to, it's being collected and aggregated. Uh, its, it's, mon its status is being monitored from a cloud, uh, from, a con in the, from a control center in the cloud. So you see the, the location of, so the top, the top view is the car uh, in the, inside the car, and the bottom view is uh, what is seen from the control center. So we can see where the car is, and we can monitor various uh, statuses of the car. Uh, safety is is the most is is the most important part is probably the most important requirement of self-driving cars. Uh, so we're we we place a lot of emphasis in, on safety. So we we adopt a lot of uh, safety standards, including uh, ISO ISO TIF and ISO um, twenty six twenty six two. And uh, in addition, we also develop. Uh, a collection of simulation tools that allow us to simulate and test the functionality of our subsystems prior to actual deployment on in real world. So these simulation tools include uh, like purely virtual simulations, and it also includes these mixed reality simulations. Where uh, so part of the signal being inputted into the car is real signal, and it's augmented by these uh, fake virtual signals. So I'll quickly show a video of this. So you can see that the car is actually driving on the road. Um, but that blue box in front of it is, is a fake car, uh, is a virtual car that is being injected into the system just to test uh, its behavior. So you can see the car, once the car has uh, pulled up, Pulled up to the side, then our car is able to successfully overtake it. And here you see you will see a scooter uh, cutting up, cutting in front of it, and our car is able to successfully slow down. And pedestrians that suddenly run into the street, our car can also uh, respond accordingly. Um, so being based in Taiwan, uh, we were subjected to a lot of very challenging uh, traffic uh, scenarios, such as um, these very dense uh, motorcycles, uh, a lot of motorcycles surrounding you, and a lot of illegal parking, and occasionally stray dogs running out in front of you. Uh, so all of these challenging scenarios has forced us to continue to innovate and uh, the result of which is uh, we have a much more robust, uh, thanks to these challenges, are, are the result of it, which is a, a very robust uh, self-driving system that is able to handle these very, very challenging situations. Um, so this is uh, our car driving in a typical uh, Taiwanese street, so there's a lot of illegally parked cars on the side, and our car is able to adju uh, adjust its trajectory accordingly based on these illegally parked cars. So that concludes um, our brief introdu introduction of uh, ITRI's self-driving car technology, um, and we look forward to hearing from you if you have any further questions or um, if, if you would like to learn more about our technology. And as, al as always, we're always looking for um, uh, new ways of using this technology to solve real world problems. So we, we'd love to hear from you if you have such a use case. Thank you. Thank you, R&D Manager Lu. Now let's welcome Manager Feng Chi Li 
to share on multi-axis motion control solutions. Hello everyone, thanks for your coming this meeting. Uh, this session I want to introduce about multi-axis motion. And my name is James Feng Lee. I'm the manager of the mechanical control department. And uh, we have uh, provided our motion control solutions. In this session, I want to introduce for you. Okay. In the first slide, I want to show you what's the uh, key part of our solutions. Here you can see, in the traditional mechanical system, if you want to produce, uh, for example, if you want to produce uh, uh, your um, mobile phone case, your mechanical software engineer, you can to use the CAD file to finish your CAD file. After that, you can do automatically to choose the CAM file. After the CAM file, maybe as you know, in the traditional is a generate the GM code in which your machine can to finish the line trajectory or the CW circle or something else. But in our solution, we have our private library. We can call it the motion control command library. You, the user can uh, use our library. You can see the example, MCG line, MCG circle to finish all of the trajectory. What do you need? Okay. And here, this part is our key uh, component. This is our, our in the mechanical system the part. Okay, the most important we will focus on thermal command generation. We provide a lot of API for our user to use uh, to meet their need. Maybe the isolation, deisolation, interpolation to avoid the vibration of a machine, for example. After that, you can to send out to the plus command or the voice command. Voice command you can say talk command. Send out to the server driver. Server driver is a closed control loop. All over this one, we can see its controller. And here, maybe someone will call what's controller. Maybe the purple block. It's about the controller server command generation and the server motor and the server driver. But here, I will show you to let you know we focus on several command generation. Okay. Next slide, I want to show you over the solution what we provide. You can see the SSS. We we can also call it the traditional uh, server control. You can send out the plus command or the merge command, or you can use the velocity or talk command. In the Y SS. We will let you know we will focus on PC base. Okay. In the Taiwan E3, we provide our research and development about a motion control ASIC. It's a abstract ASIC. And after that, you also we will also provide a motion control car. It's also maybe four SS or six SS. You have a PCI or a PCIe interface. Also. And you can also see the YSS, you know, maybe over be used in standalone. Stand alone is you just need to power on it. Because our third generation is intelligent motion control platform. Okay? It is the IMP3. It has built in the CPU and it got high real-time operating system, the VSWORS. So it also have a PCI interface. You can use it in the PC base or you can just stand alone. But on this standalone solution, we also provide IMP Leo Chen S. Okay. And in the recent years around the world, maybe like in the digital control, or you can also call this digital server, is more and more popular in the industry. And you also can separate to the private protocol, something like a SSC net or make Kassalinger, profit net, something else. But here, we provide this public. It's from German, in the back half, in the ESA CAD motion control platform. We also focus on the master controller, is that you call it EMPS, okay. In the machine, in the industry, a lot of uh, extending input and output module we need also. We also provide uh, in the second generation, we are actually with the s -Link instance solution, or IMP3 is our AIO. And our eSocket also have a slave solutions. All of this why we let you know, we have provided the product. It's a finish, it's a, it's a very, uh, 
good product for a motion control solution. Okay, next product will let you know we have a hardware. We also need to do the software. We need our motion control command library. So integrate integrate together. And uh, MCC is the most uh, important part because we accumulate uh, more than 20 years. The most important is about trajectory planning. And uh, in the CNC meeting, maybe you can call it point to point or you can face the uh, uh, motion. The most important and uh, very popular is the line trajectory, arc, circle, or helicopter. Uh, our circle trajectory not only in 2D, you also provide 3D. And uh, we also provide a lot of uh, API in the machine. You need to set your mechanical parameter, your system, something else. And we also some advanced. You maybe the, in the, you wish your machine will blend in, you will do velocity very, very smooth, or check in over a speed. And you also maybe have a DMR drawer or AD, you have some sensor, want to into your system, your controller. Or oh, very soon we provide the lots of a good and the API to uh, integrate your controller. Maybe in the future your robot, CNC, something else. Okay, so now you can know we provide the hardware and uh, our software and shield. And the other one is the, another project I, I told is it's a cat. Is a digital control. Okay. In the, our user, the most part is about a robotic control. Okay. We also to accumulate our experiment about any kind of controller, but in the, around recently 10 years, the robot control is most popular. And the most important is the, is the internet server protocol. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a CAT protocol. So we cooperate with a German accountants. Is a third party. So we have our is a cat e, uh, ECM. After that, in the motion control, the most popular and the most important is the real time operating system. And our solution have uh, our RTS is very stable version, stable product, and it's also used in industry now. But around the world in the industry 4.0, we can to integrate with uh, some industry internet protocol, some like OPC UA or uh, IO Link, uh, CC Link, and something else. We can integrate it uh, is uh, each motion controller. And uh, in the driver, in the slave, you can see the server driver. But this one is uh, different with the traditional, it's just only plus over the velocity. Here is the uh, is a CAT protocol server driver. Maybe some IO, ADD module, machine breathing, something else. In the upper side, you can see the uh, industry internet protocol, maybe your UI, ERP. The most important, around the world, uh, you, uh, our research is about the uh, big data or artificial intelligence. But in the, you use the EtherCAT mesh controller, you can easier to meet what you need. You can capture over a uh, producer of uh, data, what you want, maybe the velocity, uh, encoder, something else, information. After late, you can do research and develop your uh, AI algorithm. And in the EtherCAD motion controller, we have maybe more than thousands, more than thousands uh, set uh, uh, was uh, in the production line uh, application. So it's also a it came to meet now around the world, the industry point zero is neat. So this is no new generation of uh, our controller. Uh, final, we we'll let you know, uh, any kind of a field, any kind of a machine, if you have a user motor or a servo motor, you can uh, use our multi access motion control solutions. Maybe something like a traditional CNC, can see controller, over here is a touch panel controller, any kind of a machine. If you have a motor, you can cooperate or to integrate our uh, solution. And here, in around 10 years, the most popular and the uh, amount, the big amount is the 6S architecture robot because we tend to, instead of a human labor, and Scala, Delta, any kind of a robot. Maybe previous our station, we also have to describe about the robot control. But here, we will focus on motion control kernel. We will here with let you know. 
And here are some more, some interesting. Okay. Interesting uh, result we'll show you. We also focus on the robot control. By this the project, we finish with the uh, integral with the virtual reality. In the right side, you can see here is the virtual robot. In the left upside, you can see a physical robot. You can uh, level, uh, level down, you can see a human. You just like to play a game, you can do automatically to generate a robotic uh, trajectory to finish the robot control. In the tradition, you don't need to code in maybe the, the, the software engine. You can avoid very dangerous and very hard environment. Something like a painting, polish, something else. So this project with the integrated virtual reality, if you have any issue with the company. And the next, uh, next example just to show you, uh, this project we integrated with the robot control, also use our EMPS kernel. And we to integrate our machine vision to separate the ki different kind of uh, uh, garbage to the same. This is something like this one. Environment is very not very clear. So we use a robot integrated the machine machine to finish the to solve this question. This was also uh, you just uh, finished last year. Also today, show let you know. The most important we have our cooperated around the world. You can see the left one, left left column is this one, German Beckhoff, and the uh, East Arcade that we cooperate with the account is the third party. We also the uh, Switzerland, the uh, uh, sorry, the uh, Etihad, uh, the academic uh, organization. To in the, our virtual reality robot control, we cooperate with the uh, Etihad, and we also have uh, just as I told, the semiconductor application. SRM, GPM, Taiwan, this is Malaysia. Also, we have a lot of cooperators in the academic organization over the, in the industry. And after this meeting, I wish we can have a next step to close to cooperate with all of you guys. If you have any question, you can contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Manager Lee. Let's welcome researcher Mike Wen for the last topic on this session. Heavy lift drone technology. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mike Wen from Eitri. Today, I feel honored to participate in this forum. I will show you some current development stage of the UAV industry in Taiwan. According to the industry survey performed by market and markets analysis in 2020, the broad market value of UAV will grow to 40 $5.8 billion USD, of which the Asian Pacific region is the highest at 16.6%, uh, followed by North America. On the average, the compound annual growth rate from 2019 to 2025 is more than 15%. In the future, the largest market will be the urban air mobility region followed by logistic drone market. In 2040, uh, the market size will reach around $250 million billion USD, with a target payload of 5 kilo, kilograms and above. In March of 2022, uh, with the support of Ministry of Transportation and Communication, um, Taiwan has established a, a UAS team of Taiwan. This team is aimed to update the drone roadmap for Taiwan industry of this region. MMSL of E3 is a founding member of US, UAS Taiwan. In June of this year, with the assistance of the E3 Japan office, the founding president Wu led his staff uh, to Japan and signed an MOU with Juida of Japan. Uh, this, this shows the cooperation of Taiwan and Japan in this industry. In August of 2022, the President Tsai inaugurated the Asian UAV AI Innovation and App Application R&D Center in Jiayi, announcing the establishment of the UAV national team of Taiwan. 
in Taiwan, the Ministry of Econ Economic uh, Economy supports Taiwan by techno technologically uh, projects uh, to support the development of UAV in Taiwan. Uh, the Ministry of Transportation and Communication also in charge of building the blueprint I, uh, it, that is the drone map version 2.0 for Taiwan, aiming to gather the industry uh, and government and the research units together to make this industry prosper. Uh, uh, in Taiwan, we have a job of a UAV uh, aerospace industry park in Mingxiong. And also in Taibao City, uh, there is a, a R&D development center. And in Yizhu, there is a manufacturing center. In the future, uh, this Jai County will be the center of UAV development in Taiwan. Uh, in Taiwan's UAV industry, Thunder Tiger technology and geosite aerospace and uh, the Taiwan Cortronic Intelligent Robotics uh, Cooperation, uh, the three companies is the biggest one of this, of this industry in Taiwan. They work hard and they have many modules to help this industry prosper. Um, MMS of E3 focuses on the research and development of heavy payload UAV systems. It's a platform designed to a commercial, uh, agriculture, and industrial application. I'm going to show you three of our models. The first one is the large UAV with maximum take of weight greater than 150 kilogram. It won the multi-rotor championship in Mid Middle East International Competition, that is DXC 2020 final prize in 2020. Uh, its fuselage can be folded, and it had a good uh, man 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 offering and fast deployment cap capability. The whole unit is IP55 grade, and the payload can up to 50 kilograms. The second one is a medium-sized UAV with maximum takeoff weights in uh, 100 to 150 kilograms. The payload is used a 30-liter lit water tank and a 10 kilogram lightweight high-pressure cleaning module. This, is, this UAV is used for uh, precise work in the air. The third model is a small UAV with maximum take of weight less than 25 kg. It is equipped with a positioning platform for high precision landing as shown in the bottom right. The smart station is used to receive the package from the UAV system. Human can use the conveyor uh, below, they don't have to attach the UAV itself. So it's safer for people to receive and sending packages. Finally, I would like to show the type powers problem in, uh, in this field. The type power have to clean their insulator in, in their power stage. The, the power stage has five stores high and people, people have to carry a lot of stuffs um, and climbing up to the type power to clean the insulators. Traditionally, we use helicopters to clean the insulator in high mountain region, but it's still very dangerous for people to operate in, light, uh, in such a high um, position. So the UAV can be the next, next uh, solution for insulator cleaning. Um, for Thai power. Due to Taiwan's green power policy, uh, large-scale 
facilities such as transmission tower powers uh, and power plants have been deployed uh, all over this island. In the next 20 to 30 years, there's a lot of needs in maintain these infrastructures. So uh, because Taiwan is going to be a super aged society, uh, uh, the automation and UAV systems is, has more and more requirements in the future. Uh, looking forward to the future, the trend of industrialization and commercialization of drones is confirmed. It should continue to develop uh, hybrid power and high payload UAVs to support this industry prosper. And uh, this module can be used to improve uh, the, di the diversity of the industry, we can develop many different kinds of vehicles and to many different applications. Uh, finally, we have a YouTube channel on the website. Uh, you can search the mechanical and mechanics system lab in the YouTube, and you can see all our models on the YouTube. These UAV models and application all can be found on the YouTube channel. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you, researcher one. This concludes our first session on smart mobile vehicles. We will now take a five minute break. We're sure many of you are looking forward to discuss or learn more in detail about the technologies just introduced. Please take this opportunity to sign up for the matchmaking meetings by scanning the QR code shown on the screen so we may help arrange one-on-one -on -one meetings after the event. Feel free to get up and stretch or get a drink of water, and join us back in five minutes for the second session on smart manufacturing.
Welcome back. We will now start our second session, which will also take about 40 minutes to cover E3 MMSL's technologies on smart manufacturing. Our next four researchers will share on the challenges and opportunities of smart manufacturing and specific technologies in this field, such as microwave annealing for semiconductors and AI robotics. Once again, you're welcome to leave your messages in the chat room so we may follow up with you after the event. Let's now welcome manager Wei De Chung to share on the challenges, opportunities, and future directions for smart manufacturing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Wei De and I'm the manager of uh, IoT division. Uh, today, I'm going to give a topic, uh, the challenge, opportunity, and future uh, direction of smart manufacturing. Uh, as the slide show here, uh, I use the OPC foundation uh, material that we can, uh, we can see a lot of communication uh, issues are in the smart factory, uh, which include uh, one to A, uh, the IT informa information technology, uh, OT, that means the operation technology, uh, the wireless communication, device to device, device co to controller, and uh, also there are a lot of equations in the uh, factory, uh, including the, like, uh, the machine tools, the robot, the, the robot arm, the AGV, the pump, etc. So that means uh, to uh, felicitate the smart manufacturing issue, uh, there are a lot of technology we need to uh, include uh, in our division. Uh, we are seeing we are the uh, council uh, in the smart manufacturing, although uh, including the operation technology or uh, information technology. Uh, uh, we also work with a lot of uh, partners uh, in the E3 campus, uh, which includes like the E3 Southern uh, campus region, uh, the ICT, the information and communication uh, uh, research laboratory. Uh, so uh, I think we are focused on the four areas, like the AI plus AOI, uh, the uh, IoT, the uh, PMS, means uh, prognosis and diagnosis, uh, maintenance system, and uh, we are specialized uh, in the production line uh, op uh, optimization. And I will include those uh, topics uh, in the next slide. Okay, uh, I think to be uh, to make the factory become a smart manufacturing, there are four uh, very important issues. Uh, those are the first one is the IoT, uh, as the slide show here. Um, first, we need to um, make every uh, device or uh, equipment to be connected together. Uh, in that way that all the device can know each other. Uh, although there are uh, many uh, technology uh, in this area, uh, like the smart machine box, we help uh, the domestic ME, uh, SME before, uh, means the small, uh, medium size enterprise. Uh, use the smart machine box, we can let the machine uh, easily connecting to the network. Uh, others also like uh, we need to do the Internet of Things, not only the people, the machine, and the uh, software as well. Uh, that's what I mean for the first step for the IoT uh, communication. Next, uh, we can have the, like the quality of the equipment. That means the uh, doctor of the uh, equipment. Uh, as the um, key technology I mentioned before, like the uh, uh, RUL or uh, PMS. Uh, the third one is uh, to be a, a quality of the product. That means the product need to be a doctor to uh, inspect uh, no matter its performance or the uh, reliability. So we can use a lot of uh, machine vision like the AOI plus AI uh, stand, uh, 3D vision uh, those kind of uh, technology to help the partner to uh, check their uh, product defect. And the last step uh, is 
the uh, production line optimization. Uh, there are also many uh, technology uh, in this area. Uh, the current sectors uh, in smart manufacturing in Taiwan today is uh, major equipment with multi uh, protocols need to uh, know each other's uh, because there are a lot of data conversion uh, in the uh, in the smart manufacturing. Uh, system integration is impossible to achieve without the uh, communication model or the standard. That's the uh, current uh, uh, current issues that we also we usually face to the uh, partner and telling telling them that uh, how to uh, make the uh, smart manufacturing more easier. So we think OPCUA uh, is the future standard. That means uh, with this standard we can uh, let uh, all the device connect each other more easily. So. Uh, Within these years, we uh, in our division we have a lot of OPCUA uh, technology uh, developing so far. So the first one uh, I would like to uh, address the uh, M2M. That means the machine to machine communication. Uh, that's that is also very important in the IE 4.0 uh, for the life cycle communication and the low carbon uh, manufacturing. The core technology are promote communication standards and OPCUA information model, import intelligent power communication uh, manufacturing, and quickly build low carbon intelligent uh, uh, device. Uh, from this slides, uh, we also know that we uh, work with a lot of famous uh, uh, domestic uh, partner like TSMC, uh, CM, uh, uh, TSMC, AUO, uh, or uh, Merlin, those kind of uh, famous famous uh, company here. The next one is the uh, diagnosis and prognosis monitoring system. The core technologies are building a prognosis model for. Uh, rotoring machinery uh, based on the signals we fetch from the uh, uh, the equipment, like the vibration, the current, the voltage, or some uh, the acoustic uh, those information. Uh, we can say that is a uh, multi fusion uh, signals uh, we get from the equipment. We also realize the uh, automations online uh, the prediction and monitoring those kind of functionality to uh, make ourselves as the doctor uh, for the equipment. The third one is uh, the doctor of the uh, product. We use a lot of uh, machine vision technology uh, like AOI and for nowadays we also uh, plus another uh, I, uh, key technology uh, like the AI uh, in our original uh, machine vision uh, department. The core technologies are divide AI plus AOI technology to leverage the traditional AOI inspection. Uh, the next one is developing online AOI and 3D uh, vision quality inspection technology enable online 3D uh, appearance inspection of workpiece of wide angle, complex pose and high uh, curvature variation service. The last one is uh, the intelligent machine, the, open, the optimal control and adjustment uh, technology. The core uh, items are production line, planning and uh, design energy enhancement build the technology of uh, position, non-conflict measurement and uh, tolerance analysis, construct a complete AI driven process control feedback. The last one is ass assist the industrial, assist the industrial to upgrade from conventional production automation to intelligent manufacturing. 
Uh, I think with, with those uh, technology, uh, our main focus is to uh, make the material efficiency and the energy efficiency. Uh, in that way, we can uh, have the low carbon carbine uh, manufacturing and let the factory to become smarter. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Manager Chung. For our next topic on microwave annealing for semiconductor, let's welcome Manager Kun Ping Huang. Hello, everyone. My name is Kun Ping Huang. Uh, it's my honor to introduce my study. Uh, the, the topic is microwave annealing for semiconductor. Uh, so my online, I will talk about the characteristic and the breakthrough. Uh, and the next is the industri industrial value. And the, and the final, I will talk about the future development, development and the application potential. Okay, so um, for dopant activation uh, topic, uh, in traditional most structure, so uh, the gate length uh, 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 is, uh, is from 90, 90 nanometer uh, and uh, progress uh, into the one nanometer. So the diffusion, diffusion length in, for country, uh, now the generation is almost in three nanometer generation. The diffusion length is almost, almost zero. So in the future, so the, 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 micro, the dopant activation it will get hot and harder because the, the annealing temperature currently is, uh, is above 900 degrees C. So it's very easy to make the dopant diffusion. Okay. So in the future, we, this is the reason why uh, we, we develop a microwave annealing process because the microwave annealing uh, can, the, the annealing temperature is almost a half of a traditional a needing process. So this slide I will talk about the critical and the realistic and the breakthrough. So the first uh, technology I will talk about the spatial model diversification te technique. So we use the long, long, longitudinal and the transverse mode to increase the, uh, um, the model number. So, and uh, we also use the even and odd mode uh, to in increase the model number. So in, the, in such kind technology, we increase four times the model number. We know the, the more, the more, more model number, we will get the uh, higher uniformity. Okay, so uh, my next te technology, I will talk about the, the the time phase coupling technology. Okay, so for, for <coughs> how do we in increase the <coughs> the model number in in the power supply? So in in microwave microwave transmitter, uh, we we use the half wave neg negative five power supply of a transmitter. So if we enlarge the cap capacitor. So it will make the overlapped coupling microwave. So the, so it's so such kind of a technology is it can increase two times more the number. So so if we combine spatial diversified technology and the time phase coupling technology, so we can increase eight times the uh, uh, microwave more the number. So it, so it can it can. In, Increase the uh, the uni the uniformity of a, a needing very well. So so, so in country, uh, country uh, now the most structure uh, uh, is progress into the get all around structure. So uh, if we continue use the RTA annealing pro pro te technology. It will make the dopant diffusion. So, in uh, in the in the in, in the in the figure, we can see if the uh, even the RTA annealing annealing temperature is below to below to <coughs> below to 
700 degrees C. So in, in this case, we only use the 600 degrees. It's, it will make the dopant 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 diffusion into the diffusion area, which which will make will make the device failed. But uh, um, if we use the microwave annealing, the annealing temperature is only only three hundred and ninety degrees C. So we can see it will will not make the dopant diffusion in in into the diffusion area. So it's it can make it can guarantee the device is good. Okay, so uh, our <coughs> this slide I will talk. It, it will show the coupling coupling microwave mode uh, advantage advantage. If we do not the coupling coupling microwave mode, mode the <coughs> the uniformity of microwave annealing is only. Uh, is uh, four point one percent, but if we use the coupling microwave modes, the uniformity will down to zero point five percent. So in semiconductor, the uniformity we only can accept the one percent. So in in, in our techn microwave annealing technology, the uniformity is only zero point five percent. So our our microwave and microwave uh, annealing process uh, will get uh, can get good good um, uniformity, so which can meet the semiconductor industry criteria. Okay. So uh, in this slide, I will talk about the uh, consumable cost uh, compared to other company. Uh, uh, our microwave annealing annealing system uh, can save uh, uh, around the eighty five point six percent for the con consumable cost. So, so it it can save it it really can save the the cost to maintain the microwave annealing system. So. In the final, I will talk about the the future development and the application potential. So the first is for the chemi chemical synthesize. So because some chemical can uh, can absorb the microwave energy, so it it's will it can save the the energy and the uh, uh, and the and, and the process time to synthesize a new chemical. Okay. So, and the second, uh, the, for the powder powder metallurgy, because because you know um, in the future, the the metal metal part will getting small and small, so it 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 also can use microwave to uh, to do the met, to to do the met, metallurgy, okay, and the third uh, will. Uh, for the carbon fiber, because the carbon carbon can can absorb the microwave energy very well, so we, we also can use the microwave to to do to do uh, carbon fiber synthesis, and then for the solar cell, it's also because the silicon and the CIGS it, uh, their chemical bonding can uh, are also are also uh, can also absorb the Microwave energy, so it can decrease the uh, uh, annealing temperature, temperature of, uh, for for uh, their crystallization. Okay, and uh, for LED, uh, for uh, especially for micro LED, uh, it's near it's near the, the lower uh, annealing temperature, so uh, the micro micro. So the microwave annealing process is very, very suitable to to do the uh, LED annealing in the future. So, and of course the semicon silicon semiconductor because silicon is is a covalent bond, it can absorb the microwave energy very well. So, it's it can use it can use the microwave annealing. Uh, 
to to do the uh, device uh, annealing and the, which can make sure it can get a higher higher efficiency uh, in semiconductor industry that's all thank you thank you manager huang now let's welcome our learning manager Rui Mei Xu to share on advanced manufacturing equipment. Good day. Uh, my name is Rui Mei Xu, and it's my honor to represent our team to introduce the equip equipment technology in advanced manu manufacturing. <laughs> our work mainly focuses on developing equipment for semiconductor or electronics. We start from simulation to optimize the design for a configuration or a process. And then we will construct the key module or even the entire equipment system. We can also establish a pilot line for production validation using the equipment we develop. Sometimes, Intelligent diagnostic or analysis module will be incorporated to enhance our technology distinction. e tree simulators are mainly used for optimizing a process for synthing process, synthing deposition. Uh, for example, like uh, Plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition, evaporator deposition, or epitaxy process. The simulator are normally coupling with gas flow, thermal flow, physical, or chemical model, so that our analysis accuracy can be up to 95%. With the simulator, the process development time can be reduced from, like, from one week to two hours. This simulator technology is also an R&D 100 winning technology in 2017. Uh, plasma has been widely used in thin-thin deposition for industry like flat panel display or semiconductor industry. E3 has developed high uh, density plasma source for different frequency plasma system. For example, like radio frequency, very high frequency or microwave frequency. This high density plasma allows us to increase pr production capacity with a uh, uh, low process temperature. temperature. It can also minimize our thin damage resulting from ion bombardment during the plasma deposition. In addition, we may also incorporate some diagnostic or feedback control system to have stable process control. Uh, silicon carbide is a key material for next generation power component. However, silicon carbide has very high hardness and high chemical resistance. So that makes silicon carbide is a very difficult material to machining or polish. E3 has developed a process that combine ultrasonic grinding and also a plasma assisting polishing technology. We can improve the production efficiency for silicon carbide wafer production. This innovative process also reduces the process cost to approximately 30 to 50%. Um, nowadays, the electronic package trend goes toward high density and high frequency transmission. Therefore, 
high VR density with high aspect ratio become very important. Here we develop a copper electrode plating technology for high aspect ratio VR. And this VR feeding technology is avoid free in aspect ratio larger than 20. Also, this uh, technology is a old weight process. Not only our plating process is a weight process, but also the seeding layer deposition is done in a weight process. The seeding layer is traditionally done by sputtering. But here we can use our specialized formula to make it a weight process. Therefore, the cost and process time can be significantly reduced compared to traditional VR hole feeding process. Our, demonstra our demonstration on, for the high aspect ratio electroplating is done on a glass substrate as shown on the figure. The next technology I would like to introduce is a technology called laser-induced metallization technology. Laser-induced metallization technology is a unique process that we can form metal pattern directly on a three-dimensional structural surface. The procedure starts from spraying on a laser-inducible coating to any substrate, either flat or three-dimensional surface. Then it will follow by a laser scan to activate the material. When the material was activated, we, uh, we put the material into the electroless plating process. And the metal light can be formed directly on the laser-induced area. This laser-induced metallization process is suitable for a circuit pattern or antenna pattern on 3D sub substrate. So it will allow us to util utilize the irregular surface on a 3D object. object which traditionally are not possible to use. Uh, the final technology I would like to introduce is the aerosol jet. An aerosol jet was developed to form precise fine line pattern through jet printing process. The pattern size can be as small as 20 micron. This is a mask-free technology. So it can be used for versatile material and patterns during designing stage. Therefore, a fast, arbitrary, and large area patterning can be achieved through this aerosol jet technology. This technology can be also applied in circuit repair process. And this would be uh, the introduction for our team's technology. Thank you. Thank you, R&D Manager Xu. Finally, let's welcome Division Director Su Huang to share on AI Robotics in Yitri. Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about AI Robotics in Yitri. My name is Xu Huang. I'm the Division Director of Intelligent Robotics, E3. So E3 Robotics established in 2005. In the beginning, we focused on uh, service robots. We have security robots, tour guide robots, companion robots, and cleaning robots. And as from the year of 2010, we switched our focus to industrial robots, including industrial manipulators and HGVs. 
So our research focus is still on the controller, robotics controller. And in more recent years, software plays more and more important parts in robotics. So we have our own simulators and AMRs. We provide this uh, solution to the industrial for robotic sales and the total solution. So let's have a look at our email robot controller. These controllers have mobile uh, motion libraries, including time, true motion planning, and singularity obstacle avoidance. We have better human-robot interface collaborations and with sensor-free compliance, uh, compliance tracking. We use all digitized interface for our controllers. With the help of EtherCAT, the sampling rate can be up to 1, kilo, one, kilo, one k hertz. Option modules, including accuracy improvement modules and hand-eye coordination modules. The CPS robotics is the trend for uh, current use. CPS stands for Cyber Physical System. Our email controller handles the physical part of the robot control together with the equipment and sensors. And our simulator, EasySim, uh, handles the cyber parts. We have a CAD of light editor and robot planning for trajectory simulation. We combine these cyber and the physical parts to different kinds of uh, applications, including grinding, polishing, um, weaving, and spreading, painting. So one example of our CPS robotics is Vision Guided Robot, VGR. Our simulator simulates the 3D of the object and can recognize the objects from the environment. We call this example as a random bin picking. So our simulator has the capabilities of multi-view angles to reduce the blind spot, and then our AI algorithm can determine a best grasping point for robots. So this software can then be implemented to the real world. So our robot can, with the camera, to pick up the workpiece from a piled object, as shown in the videos below. Another example of CPS robots is a robotics grinding and polishing system. And here, in the initialization states, we import the model, CAD model of the object, also with the CAD model of robots and uh, devices. And then our simulator can optimize to simulate the physical model with the AI optimization algorithms. So here, we optimize the position of the robot and also the trajectory of the working movement. And in the end, we transport this uh, software to a robotic grinding system. In the meantime, we collect real-time data. So we have another quality assessment feedback loop. And here, we have an iteration process to improve the quality of the grinding robot. So our robot can uh, manip manipulate and also perform better and better. And here we introduce our AMR, Autonomous Mobile Robot. This robot consists of a mobile platform together with a manipulator on top. And our navigation software to deal with the uh, navigation, mapping, localization, allowing the robot to move around in the working places. We have multi-spot uh, navigation algorithms and the sensor station navigation algorithms. This AMR can be applied both in industrial applications as well as the service applications. For industrial use, this AMR can transport work pieces in factories and also can be used as an auto forklift for inspection and surveillance, we have a high power field uh, detection robot. Another part is a service part. Maybe in convenience stores, you can see an AMR moving around, pick and, pack, pick and place the uh, goods in a convenience store. And this, this robot can also be used in hospital for uh, this disinfection. 
and also in airports or train stations for cleaning. We also extend our simulator to a bigger metaverse. This is what we call a robotics metaverse. We leverage the a powerful computing power from NVIDIA. So our robot twin have the function of uh, AI and also the Omniverse realistic simulation and also SQL database. We use this as a basis to apply uh, robot twin to various applications. So in the right side, we can see a realistic simulation for manipulation, uh, man manufacturing process. So this is a simulator of a real factory in Taiwan. We also extend our robotics application to medical use. So the first example is a robotic spine surgery system. So we have software enabled robotics arm with intelligent medical image guiding. So this high accurate robotic system can assist an operator to perform the surgery. So we now in the process to accelerate the time to market process. Another interesting innovative uh, medical robot consists of a tiny design and a flexible structure. So this robot can be uh, moved inside human body to perform medical or uh, to treat for treatment or biopsy. So our e tree robotics handles the robotics issues in four aspects. For the thinking part, we have our robot controller and simulator to gen generate robot programming and the trajectory. For the vision part, we have a vision-guided system to perform the visual-guided or random beam picking application in factories. And this CPS robotics is used to various kinds of uh, tasks in the factory to reduce the human labor or to improve the quality of the manufacturing. In the last part, our AMR systems can be used in both industrial and service applications, providing better movable dynamics manufacturing system. So that concludes my presentation today. And together, we build a better future. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Division Director Huang. This concludes our second session as well as today's event. Our experts shared insightful information on the future trends of smart manufacturing and the technologies that are now advancing in this field. Let's invite Deputy General Director Bin Xiang Yang back for some closing remarks. Thank you for attending today's MMSL online forum. I believe you have got some ideas on our smart vehicles and smart manufacturing technologies. For example, we are able to design and develop transmission and chassis for electric vehicles. Our autonomous driving technologies have been tested and verified in many different fields, even in different countries. Along with the ground autonomous driving, we also have high payload drone that can transfer the future logistics. In different industries, we incorporate different sensing and actuating technologies to make the process more efficient with better quality. If you would like to know more details about the topics that we introduced today, please feel free to contact us or our representatives in your area. Look forward to interacting with you in the future. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much for being with us in these 100 minutes. We're sure you have several takeaways and are even more informed on the latest trends in smart mobile vehicles and smart manufacturing. Please don't forget to sign up for the matchmaking meetings by scanning the QR code to have the opportunity to engage further with us. Thanks again and see you next time.